Witness Skynet's new quest to destroy humanity's last hope when a couple escapes the War of the Machines in 2018, only to be hunted by T-800 to protect a precious secret. It's all right here in our review of The Terminator No. 1 from Dynamite Comics. See you in 3. Welcome back to Comical Opinions. This is our review of The Terminator No. 1. You know what? I guess the best I could say is The Terminator No. 1 is a Terminator comic. That's about as high a praise as we can give it. Writer Declan Shalvey begins a new series with familiar concepts, doing familiar things, with familiar outcomes, and a familiar cliffhanger. Don't get me wrong, despite the rash of recent box office bombs, there are plenty of Terminator stories that could make for new and exciting entertainment, but this first issue just ain't it. The issue begins with a fully skeletal T-800 kneeling at the bottom of a body of water. Suddenly it activates and begins to move. The issue then shifts to an older couple living off the grid in 2018 Alaska. We learn through snips of narration that the couple has been on the run and avoided the near mass extinction from the War of the Machines. While the older man, his name is Harper, enjoys a day of fishing on the lake as his wife, named Penny, washes dishes in their cabin, Harper sees a figure emerging from the lake, marching toward the cabin. A Terminator has found them. Declan Shelby's opening is familiar but somehow a bit odd. A couple living off the grid to avoid machines and war makes perfect sense, but how did a Terminator get in the middle of a lake, or maybe it's a river, where did it come from? You expect some setup when starting a series, so you'll find the setup here is where the comic is particularly weak. Harper races back to the shore. From his shouts we can gather he's aware of the existence of Terminators and that he's prepared for one to arrive. Harper sprints ahead of the T-800, shouting for Penny to burn the box whatever that means, as he dashes for his weapons. The Terminator crashes through the door as Penny lights a box of photos and mementos on fire, which is now we will learn what that means, presumably to hide the identity of whoever is in the photos. This scene to defend against an oncoming Terminator almost works, and it works even less when you hear what happens next. The year is 2018, so why would Penny and Harper keep photos and incriminating keepsakes around in physical form? If physical photos are your thing, and maybe that's theirs, so okay, we'll go with that, you know their discovery could be dangerous. Why keep them around in a box in the open air? Why not store them in a safe or a hiding place? If it seems like we're asking a lot of questions, don't worry, there are actually more coming because that's kind of why this comic is a little bit troubling. The comic then flashes back to 1979, just after Penny and Harper are married. Harper is concerned he is tracked by the government. His attitude and the way he presents himself tips slightly into conspiracy nutjob territory. Not too bad, but he seems a little bit cuckoo. A man, a very large man, shows up almost immediately after they get married, destroying their lives, killing their family members to get to them. Harper and Penny arrange to buy a small plane to fly to their new location in Alaska when the man arrives to hunt them down. Their accelerating plane and the man collide, tearing part of the flesh off his arm and face. The man clings to the plane, but Benny and Harper get away when part of the plane's door rips free, sending the man splashing into the water below. Penny and Harper's escape scene makes sense in the moment, but it becomes more confusing when you think about what comes after. Has the Terminator been sitting at the bottom of the water for almost 40 years? Remember, we're flashing back between 1979 and 2018. If it's the same Terminator we saw in the opening pages, how did it lose all its clothes and flesh during its time in the water? and get them back when it shows up in 2018 as we saw in the pages when it attacks the elderly couple. How did the Terminator find Penny and Harper after all these years if it's just resting underwater and has no idea which way their plane went? The questions just keep stacking up and it really feels like Declan Shelley did not think this plot through. The issue ends with Harper and Penny giving their lives to protect the knowledge that they have a child. The Terminator seeing that information as the cabin goes up in flames and a new hunt beginning. Overall, The Terminator number one is the start of a new hunt with all too familiar themes and an, I, I gotta just gotta say it, an amateurish mess of continuity errors in editing. We were hoping Dynamite found a way to continue their streak of success with Johnny Quest and Space Ghost, but appears they haven't. Let's switch gears and talk about the art for a second. The artwork by Luke Sparrow and Colin Craker is, I would say, perfectly okay. Harper and Penny's character designs, which take up the majority of the comic, are distinctive. The facial acting is pretty on point, and the panel settings are reasonably well done. That said, the weak point of the art in this issue is a generally muted flatness in the coloring. Visually, the comic is just bland. 
Let's take a step back and look at the big picture. For longtime Terminator fans, you may wonder where this first issue fits in the continuity of the films or previous Terminator stories in other mediums. If we follow the original timeline, Judgment Day, which kicks off the War of the Machines, takes place in 1997. So if this story follows the original sequence, it takes place 11 years after the War of Machines begins. Final thoughts. What do we think about Terminator number one? Begins a new hunt to destroy humanity with a comic that leans on overly familiar themes and is riddled with too many unacceptable consistency errors. It's bland, it's boring, and it's inconsistent, which is not a good way to adapt one of the world's most recognizable sci-fi franchises. Therefore, the Terminator number one earns a 5 out of 10. I was looking forward to seeing what Dynamite would do with this license, so this issue is a real disappointment. But what do you think? Are you a Terminator fan? Are you a Terminator film fan or just the property in general? Leave a thumbs up if this review is helpful and drop a comment below with which Terminator film is your favorite. Also remember to click on the link in the description to read the written review, check out the variant covers and preview pages, and buy this comic to help support the channel. Your support is greatly appreciated. So thank you very much for joining and stay tuned through the outro for more reviews just like this one.